again joined with Dr. Eric Westman and today we're going to be discussing the role of sugar and carbs and what really happens inside of our bodies, why it affects us, either positively or negatively. Well, you know, we've been taught that sugar and starches and carbs are important for energy, right? That you get quick energy from sugar and that's true. And in fact, for a long time, um, it was thought that it was important to have sugar every day. If you didn't have sugar and starches, something would be wrong. And we're learning that that's not the case. But so definitely sugars and starches can be a quick energy source. Um, but the problem is when you start eating more sugar and starch over your uh, amount of calories and energy that you're burning, you're gonna store the sugar and starch as fats. So that's why uh, communities or, or populations that were predominantly having rice and beans, for example, but they were mainly poor or didn't have much food, they did fine. But now that the, uh, there's more affluence, there, there's more uh, money in the country, they get more access to food, but if it's a starch-based diet, they're going to be turning that starch and sugar into fat. And so now obesity the excessive fat in the body is being found all over the world. Um, and the important thing is that it's the sugars and starches that are creating the internal hormonal situation to create and store fat. So really it's the potatoes, pasta, rice, bread that are the fattening foods, not the fat. So that's confusing. So one thing that might be very confusing to people is some people think that sugar is the white stuff that you get in the packet that you have with your coffee and tea and starches comes from the ground, let's say a potato, it's, got, it's full of starch and carbs and many other different uh, forms of carbs and starches. They don't really see that the sugar, they don't see the, the, the relationship between sugar and, and carbs as, as it being the same. Well, you know, it's not the same when you look at it, but when you digest it in your stomach, it is the same. So those starches get digested to sugar, like pure sugar that you see, and then gets absorbed as sugar. I mean, anyone who has a, a blood glucose meter, blood sugar meter, will see after eating a potato, their blood sugar will go up. So, so another big one is, this, very similar to the potatoes, is we've been always taught that fruit is very healthy. You must get in your X amount of fruits per day. The fact is most people are unaware that if you eat the fruit and they che check their blood sugar, their blood sugars are going to go up. Yeah, it's still it's sugar. So that's, that, that's something that's pretty important for people to understand and to, and to know. Now, something that many people, uh, most certainly when I heard it for the first time and I heard it from yourself, uh, it was a real, real awakening for me. And that was, and maybe you can explain to our viewers, um, the average person, how much blood they've actually got in their body, and then what happens when they eat, let's say, a banana, or they eat a piece of bread, or they eat a potato. I think that would be quite a good one to explain what happens inside of our bodies. So if you check your blood sugar, and then multiply out the, that milligram per deciliter and all that, there's really only a teaspoon of sugar in the entire bloodstream. So, so let's, just, let's just stop right there. That's just one teaspoon, and would that be the same for everybody? So for example, if I took out my right. blood and I, I, I got all the sugar extracted, there would just be about a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half? Less for children, Okay. because right? they have less blood. But it's not like one would have a cup of sugar and one would no, have a teaspoon. No. So it's very, very small differences that we've got within, the, within our bodies. So that stands to reason that if we've got only a teaspoon or just over a teaspoon of sugar in our bodies and we ingest something like a banana, which has got how many grams of carbs? Well, which has 30 grams, which would six times, which would be six teaspoons of sugar. So what so you're pouring six teaspoons of sugar in a system that only has one teaspoon. So the blood sugar is going to go way up. Insulin is put out from the pancreas to lower the blood sugar because the body doesn't like the sugar to be low or to be high. And so basically, there's a up and down of blood sugar after just one banana. Uh, something else that's very very important. So. Let's, say for, let's take me for an example, I'll eat a banana, my body might do something differently. It'll do the same thing, It'll, the blood sugar will go up, the insulin will be secreted, but my body might be able to burn sugar more effectively than let's say somebody else that's metabolically broken. Yeah. So what happens when somebody that, is, that has metabolic issues, that eats the same food that let's say I would eat, how is my body differently different to their body? 
Right, so if someone has diabetes, for example, or pre-diabetes, they can't process the sugar as fast. So instead of the up and down, or maybe even your blood sugar might not go up much, theirs is going to go up a little higher, a little longer, even with the same amount of food. So it's, a, it's riskier if, you're, if you have diabetes or pre-diabetes to have those foods. Okay, and then uh, I think finally a good one to, to chat about is that the overload of blood sh of, of sugars that we consume is largely a progressive disorder. So in other words, it may not affect us when we're young, as we age and as we get older, so it affects us more and more and more. It's why when we look back on pictures of our youth, we were thin and then we were, then we were let's say, fatter, and the, most people would think, well, um, that's just because I ate more. But that's not necessarily the reason. It may be because the, maybe the sugar intake has, has increased over the years. Um, and activity has ac gone down. Activity's potentially gone down. And also, it's a progressive disease. In other words, our body becomes more and more insulin resistant as time goes on. Would you agree with that? Yes, so you're going to be storing the fat easier and easier. It's all, like there's a pop-off valve that stores the fat when you have extra sugar, and you're going to be doing that more and more. Um, and then factor in that our metabolism slows down as we get older naturally. So, so if you ate the same amount as you did at age 30, as you did at age 40, then you're going to be naturally gaining weight if you ate the same amount okay. and had the same exercise. So all of these things kind of bring it back to you don't want to have much sugar or starch. So for people that are battling with metabolic issues, uh, are battling with a, a rising HbA1c or high fasting insulin, luckily there is a solution and it's a pretty simple one and you give it out every single day in your clinic and Just stop eating the carbs right <laughs> so it sounds like it's a, it's a it's simple and it really is that simple no need to complicate things and your philosophy has always been to keep it as simple as possible make it practical right yeah. well thank you very much that was a very very informative again um, if you found this video informative or helpful we would encourage you to share it the only way we're going to start making change across America and the rest of the world is for you guys to help us along with that and share these videos as much as you possibly can. And so from myself and Dr. Eric Westman in Washington, D.C., thank you very much.